Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and welcome to a brand new episode of City of Churches. Today, today we're on the beautiful campus of St. John's University in Queens, New York to visit St. Thomas More Church. St. John's University was founded by the Vincentient community back in 1870 and was named in honor of St. John the Baptist. Originally located in Brooklyn, the current campus has been here in Jamaica, Queens since the 1950s. Well, here we are at St. Thomas More Church. So let's go on inside and see what they have in there, all right? This is a fascinating church. I have never seen anything designed like this. So come on. Hi, today, today we're visiting St. Thomas More Church right here on the beautiful campus of St. John's University. And I'm here with the Distinguished Professor of Theology, Dr. Julia Upton. Hello, Doctor. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, being on our show and to show us your beautiful church. It's a privilege. Now, from what I understand, you were involved with the original planning of this church? Right, I chaired the building committee, building and design committee. Wow. How old is this particular church? Because it looks relatively new. It was dedicated 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Right. How long was the planning involved in this? Well, it pro we probably started planning in the beginning of 1998. Oh, wow. Um, but we didn't get a shovel in the ground until quite a few years later. Well, what's fascinating to me is um, the actual design of this church. Octagonal? It is. Octagonal. It looks round, but then when you come inside, you see the sides. What went into the planning of that? Because it's, it's definitely unusual. It is unusual, and part of that is the time in which it was built. So it is clearly a post-Vatican II church. And in, des and in uh, developing a design for the church, we really st we studied the church documents a lot. And all of the terminology about the Eucharist was, we are gathered together. We we're around the table of the Lord, around the table of the Lord. And so that's what really framed our decision. It's very inviting. It's not a separation. It feels like you're all one, which is what you're exactly, which, which I found fascinating from the moment I came in here. I, there's so many great things in here that I, I have to go over. <laughs> um, I noticed that the stations of the cross, they're so unique. Um, they're kind of like um, mosaic They puzzle. are mosaics, right. But it looks like a mosaic puzzle, the way it, it, it's very artistically beautiful. They are gorgeous, right? I mean, they're, they're all around. I mean, they're just so lifelike and so very, very, you know, I've never seen anything like that. We hadn't either. <laughs> That's why we fell in love with them when we saw them. The uh, mosaic artist firm showed the, us just a sample, just pulled it out of her bag. We weren't, we had a completely different idea for the stations. Isn't of the it amazing cross. that sometimes you plan? something and then all of a sudden something else comes out and you go that's better and that's just like it was meant to be exactly which as we're going along uh the the organ uh, the pipe organs are amazing They're actually built into the into the wall there which is which is fascinating i'm looking at uh, a statue of saint thomas more back there which is fascinating i mean it, it it's just really a, a very unique and beautiful church now this was the first church on campus the first church. We mm -hmm. had other places where we worshiped. A church, a freestanding church, was on the original designs for this campus. Really? It just took 50 years for it to happen. What is the importance 
of this church being on the campus and for the students and, and, and for their lives? Well, it's important for all of us because the church is a center of our lives. And for the students, it becomes a kind of spiritual classroom for them. So we have all kinds of worship services here. Um, besides Eucharist, the students have holy hours. We have, oh, lectures often that are here. Um, so it's, a, it's an important spiritual center here. How many people fit in here? I know you got 20,000 students, there's no way. <laughs> but how many people do you get in here on, on a service? Well, Can you fit? Well, 415 is oh, wow. the number on the books. But for a baccalaureate mass, there's standing room only. We put in some extra uh, chairs. The windowsills under the churches, under the stained glass, are so that you can sit on them. Oh, wow. They're sort of sitting sills. So we had in mind, we don't, you don't build a church for Midnight Mass on Christmas, no. but you know that that will happen. So you want to provide, think ahead to how would you accommodate people. And then we fill the narthex with chairs for back in baccalaureate, put a tent outside. Oh, wow. So, you know, we've filled, we've had 800 people 800? around, oh, wow. you know, and, in and, all oh, those. But, you know, for once a year baccalaureate mass, that happens. You know, 300, 350 students worship here every Sunday evening, 5.30 oh, wow. mass. It's the largest gathering of students weekly on campus. That's a nice tribute to St. John's and good Catholic faith. <laughs> it's really a tribute to our benefactor who, yeah. who wanted a church because when he was growing up and a student, it was a place of refuge and inspiration for him. And he wanted that for our students. So we're very grateful for him too. And who's the benefactor? Uh, John Brennan, John and Anita Brennan. Oh, wow. Um, so and they're the original ones that wanted this church. Yes, they, they donated the funds to build the building itself. Oh, God bless him. Now, as, as we're looking around, where would the tabernacle be? We have a separate Blessed Sacrament Chapel uh -huh. where the Blessed Sacrament is, and our uh, concept of that was that people could go in there and pray privately, even when the church was being used for another celebration. It's a very intimate space. It's also octagonal, and we don't talk in there at all. There's that reverence for whoever might want to be there to pray. Every show, my, my one fascination in most of all the churches that I do is I'm a big fan of stained glass. Huge fan of it. Well, that's now, great. We have a lot for you to be I enjoying. know, and, and we're, we're looking at it. Can you tell us some of the history? Sure. First of all, all of the art in this church is original. The stained glass, the mosaics, you know, we didn't get anything out of a catalog. All was designed for us. Who designed it? Well, the, sta the stained glass was done by an artist uh, named Sylvia Nicholas. Okay. And she is the fourth of five generations of stained glass artists. We worked with her in developing a plan for the stained glass. So because we're a university church, we knew that our parishioners would always be from 18 to 24 years old. You know, the staff and the faculty come here, but we have 20,000 students between the ages of 18 and 24. So we wanted a church that would speak to them. And because we're university, we also wanted a church that would teach. Mm -hmm. So we focused on Jesus the teacher. So the four large stained glass pieces around the church are each for the four gospels. Um, and the lower pane tells the, has the gospel writers. And at the top of the stained glass is Jesus in what we call the quintessential teaching moment in that gospel. Oh, wow. So in the Matthew window, it's the Sermon on the Mount. In the Mark window, it's the crucifixion. In the Luke window, it's the resurrection. And here in the John window, it's the washing of the feet. Oh, so, so every time we leave this church, we leave remembering that Jesus said, do this, wash each other's feet. 
after all looking all the stained glass, I, I noticed that there's a skylight up there. Can you, can you tell yes, us the, about that above the altar? We have a cupola that's open to the heavens mm -hmm. and it's directly above the altar. And there is stained glass in that too. It's, I noticed it's that. Also, it's also done by Sylvia Nicholas, but it's more abstract. Um, so there's a fleur-de-lis remembering mm -hmm. that uh, St. Vincent was from France and because we're a Vincentian community and an eagle for America. Oh wow, well that's really nice. <laughs> Dr. Upton, was there any reason why uh, this particular site was chosen for this church? Well, the architects did a study of the land to determine which was the best place to site it. Um, this area of Queens was really kind of filler from when they were building the subways. Oh, wow. So it, it, the ground itself uh, can present problems when you're trying to build. So that's why this was selected. Ironically, this is exactly where the church was located, situated in the original plans for this campus. Like a foreshadow of what was to come. That's, that's pretty amazing. The exactly. original plans in 18, and that was... Uh... Well, they purchased the property in 1929. They okay. didn't start building here until uh, the 50s. The campus opened in 1950. But the designs probably... Well, who, who designed this church? Well, this church was designed by Martin de Sapio. Okay. And we had visited some of his churches before we decided on him as an architect. And they all impressed us because they weren't sort of a cookie cutter. They okay. reflected the environment in which they were built. Why was the church named after St. Thomas More? Well, that's Mr. Brennan's decision. He's very devoted to St. Thomas More. Um, his, he's a lawyer and he's a double alumnus of St. John's, the college and the law school. And he decided that he would like the church name for Thomas More. So that's why we have Thomas More. Just Standing behind uh, standing us. Standing right behind us there. <laughs> In the forest. Yes. And that's uh, the St. Thomas More and um, the Blessed Mother, are, who is uh, Our Lady's Seat of Wisdom. They were both designed by an artist named David Wanner. Oh. And the Blessed Mother is seated, and she's an older woman. And that's not something you. No, really, I've never. That's, really that's something I've never see. seen. But again, we wanted uh, Mary as kind of a grandmother because students, our students, have really wonderful relationships with their grandmothers. And the Blessed Mother lived to be quite old. She was alive when Jesus died. He died at 33, where tradition tells us. So she had to be at least close to 50, which was a really old woman in her time. Can you tell us, some of viewers, about St. Thomas More? I'd like to hear about it. Okay. <laughs> as well. Well, Thomas More is known as the patron saint of lawyers. Oh. You know, and Thomas More was really the king's deputy and advisor. But when the king wanted to go against the church, Thomas More wouldn't go, wouldn't abide by that. And so he ripped the chains of office off his neck. And that's how he's pictured in this um, statue as he's ripped the chain of office and said, I am God's servant first. And he was- That, that had to be very hard to do back then. He was killed in the Tower then. of London. That's a very, very uh, strong commitment to faith. Yeah, and it's, when you think about it, it's also a teaching moment sure. for our students too. The other shrine that we have here is a shrine to memory, in memory of 9-11. We had more than 75 alums die in the towers. So we have a special um, shrine remembering 9-11. And an iron worker from the recovery effort heard we were building a church and brought us a cross made from the iron at oh. the destroyed site. That was really nice. O oh, healing river, send down your waters. Send down your waters upon this land. O oh, healing river, send down your waters to wash the blood from off the sand. The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. 
and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. Prayerfully dedicated to the memory of those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001. Dr. Upton, is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers about this great church before our special surprise? You know, everything here is very intentional. It's all on an axis. There's, if we go out those doors, walk across campus, there's St. John Hall, mm -hmm. the first building on campus, and it lines up with the uh, baptismal font, and you enter right into the altar, and this axis, there's another axis here to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, and an axis over there to the Reconciliation Chapel. So it's, you know, it's all intentional that way. The other thing um, that I didn't mention about the stained glass is when we were building the church, we involved the entire community. So I wrote to everybody on campus, faculty, students, staff, administrators, everybody, and asked them which of the gospel stories or New Testament stories really um, spoke to them. So really a lot of their thinking went into the selection of those stained glass. So you involved the community. Absolutely. And that in the nice. Blessed Sacrament Chapel too, the stained glass in there is done by a different artist, John Colligan. And the stained glass is the church faithful, the church suffering, the church triumphant, and the church universal. But in the church triumphant, the saints, uh, in that same request, I asked them, who are the saints that really call them forth? And again, it wasn't a contest, but it really informed us. And I have beautiful things that people wrote to me about either the stories from the Gospels or the saints and how they are depicted and how they have uplifted them in their lives. It's beautiful. It's yeah, a beautiful it's amazing experience. So many people have different saints that they they hold in higher, you know, form over. It's, it's Saint yeah, Joseph, well, Saint Saint Anthony. Saint Francis of Assisi is a big winner. Oh really? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's that's He's a good one. He's a big winner. That's yes. a good one. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for that, and I just want to let our know, viewers know that uh, when we come back, Dr. Upton is going to show us something very, very unique and special here at St. Thomas More at uh, St. John's University. So we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to City of Churches. We're here at St. Thomas More Church on the beautiful campus of St. John's University. Well, Dr. Upton, I'd like you to tell us something, show us something very <laughs> special here at St. Thomas More. <laughs> well, when we were building the church, we first had to get permission from the bishop. Bishop Daly was the ordinary at that time. And he asked what we were going to name the church. And Father Harrington, the president at that time, said the benefactor had asked us to call it St. Thomas More. And the bishop was fine with that, but he said, then it has to have a strong Vincentian presence because this university is sponsored by the Vincentian community. And that is what gave birth to the idea to have this mosaic, a circular mosaic, that tells the story of St. Vincent and St. John's University. Oh, wow. So it starts with St. Vincent up there in heaven, and it tells the story of his founding the priests, giving a, preaching his sermon, founding the daughters, ladies of charity, and then the daughters of charity, the daughters doing their work, the priests coming from Italy. St. Vincent originally was from Paris, but the priests who came to the United States and helped found the university, came from Italy. There's the first uh, St. John's, which was a little farmhouse in Brooklyn. 
with an American flag. With, <laughs> with an American flag, yes. And then here are the Vincentians doing the work in Brooklyn, taking care of the poor and teaching. And that building there is the original St. John's University on Lewis Avenue in Brooklyn. And then you have the library building on our present campus and today's students and back to St. Heaven with St. Vincent and all the blessings. And this side of the church, of the narthex, tell, has all of the saints, Vincentian saints who have been canonized. So there's quite a, a line of them there. And this side tells the story of the apparition of the miraculous medal to um, St. Catherine Labre, who was a daughter of charity. So even our narthex is a classroom, it teaches. And we use this space a lot um, as a place where people can gather um, for a variety of events as well. It's actually, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I mean, you were explaining to me on how this mosaic is done. I mean, tell us, tell us about that. You, you said you, you were in Florence when they were... Yes, I was really privileged to be able to go to Florence and see this uh, mosaic being uh, fabricated. So it's kind of like an airplane hangar where they have it all spread out. And first they begin by sketching the design and then they paste onto it all of these small mosaic tiles. And they're pasted together and they're pasted on the drawing. And then they cut it into maybe about 12 by 12 pieces and they, that's how they sent it over here. Oh wow. And it took about a month for them to mount this on the wall, but it's putting together. It's like a puzzle. Exactly. And this is that St. Vincent de Paul. And they gave me this piece of sketch. That's really and nice of them to do. I had it framed. It's actually birthday. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And especially for me, you know, I've been, been a part of it you since been, the well, beginning. You, yes, so, you have been. And uh, so the, it this is a nice tribute to, to you. Right. <laughs> I have a question for you. Sure. Who, who, is the designer of in here the same designer of, of the Stations of the Cross? Yes, they all come from Molini Studios in Florence. This is, this is breathtaking, this is really beautiful, and the colors are, are amazing. Because of all the light, it's so, and color, it's so inviting. One of the wonderful stories that we have um, was Brother Mike, uh, who's a Marist brother who works in campus ministry. And he came home late one night, and he saw this church ablaze. And uh, he went, came to investigate what was going on, 10 o'clock at night, the church, all the lights on. And he came in and it was filled with students who weren't Catholic. There were students who were coming to grieve the loss of two of their friends who were actually from India, who had been killed in a motor accident. So, you know, it is known by, to our students as a place where you come to pray. And it doesn't just have to be for Catholics only. Oh, they, it's their spiritual center here on campus. That's really nice. That's universal. Yeah, exactly. Well, Dr. Upton, I, I want to thank you so much for, for inviting us to St. Thomas More's Church here. You have to come check this out or come down to St. John's and look at the, you know, the campus. I recommend it very highly. Is there a website? Yes, there is. Um, so it's on the university website, which is www.stjohns, S-T-J-O-H-N-S, altogether, dot E-D-U, slash S-T-M-C. We're going to put that up on screen just as well, okay? Well, that's it for this episode of City of Churches at St. Thomas More's Church here at St. John's University. If you have any questions about St. Thomas More's Church here at St. John's, you can please follow us on Facebook or Twitter or our website, their website, or our website at www.netnewyork.tv, or you can write into us at City of Churches at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, I want to thank Dr. Julia Upton for having us here, because this is very beautiful. I'm Anthony Mangano. Thanks for watching. Please come back and watch our next episode. God bless you. <laughs>